Here at the channel, we're all about cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. While the clean and green get the lion's share of our time these days, thanks to the rapid growth of the electric vehicle sector, today we're looking at some progress on the safer and smarter side of things. So let me ask you a question. When you think about autonomous driving, what pops into your head? Is it a Tesla neatly tracking down the highway under the control of FSD Beta? Is it a futuristic cruise origin pod or something of that ilk? Is it the news stories about Toyota's autonomous e palette hitting a Paralympian? Or is it the countless visualizations on screen of autonomous systems navigating a road, identifying cars, signs, pedestrians and cyclists along the way? For me, it's mainly the latter. Having attended more autonomous driving presentations than I've got earrings, I've gotten very used to watching these visualizations from a wide range of manufacturers. We've seen it from Tesla, we've seen it from Uber, from Waymo, from Nvidia, from Mobileye. And while the visualizations have got fancier, now with 3D representations of cars, not just Vectrex-like bounding boxes, that fundamental underlying model of identifying what's around the car is really common. But object recognition as part of a process which divides driving up into a bunch of separate tasks, each of which the autonomous system is trained to do, while it's a component of many autonomous driving systems, isn't the only way to go out building a self-driving car. And there's lots of different approaches to solving the self-driving problem. As the popular saying goes, dermis and feline can be separated in innumerable ways. So last month I was super excited to watch Comic-Con, not Comic-Con, because I've never made it to that. Because for some reason I always fail to realise until the last minute that it's happening. And then I can't get a ticket, which is really embarrassing for someone who claims geekhood. No, this was Comacon, which detailed the open source comma.ai project's progress as it aims to, as they put it, make driving chill. During the event in which the team unveiled their latest iteration of the hardware on which the project runs, the Comma 3, which we'll come to in a bit, the team also discussed the approach that the Comma project has taken to driver assistance. And what's particularly interesting about Comma is its approach is one of near end-to-end -end training of its AI. And it's the only example of end-to-end -end training for driving that you, as a member of the public, can play with. But what does end-to-end -end mean in this case? One of the most common ways to train an AI to drive is, like we just said, to divide up driving into a bunch of process chunks. For a typical automotive AI, that's gathering sensor input, using that sensor input to perceive, we'll come back to that in a moment, then taking what the AI has perceived, feeding that into a process that plans what it should do, then using that to generate commands to control the vehicle, and then confirming that the initiated controls have had the desired effect. A checks the sensors, B works out what's around it, C works out what needs to happen, D does it, then E checks that it happened, then back to A. That's the basic design of a lot of autonomous driving systems. Going back to perception, as part of the perception process, you need to give the AI object recognition. You need to train it to be able to identify and sometimes predict the behavior of all sorts of different things that it's likely to encounter. This is a car, for example. And it's a thing you should avoid hitting. And this is what you see when looking at a lot of AI driving demonstrations. For human readable visualizations, they'll draw bounding boxes around things. This box holds a car. This box holds a human. This box is a bicycle. And this box is a, I don't know, uh, it's a mongoose. But comma state that there's a challenge with this. And it is definitely a problem, though how solvable it is, is a question I can't really answer just yet. And that problem is, there are essentially an infinite number of things you have to teach a car about. Humans, we're good at classifying, filtering, and ditching information that's not super relevant. And we're good at identifying what a thing is from many different angles. You can look at a car or a person from almost any angle and go, oh yes, that's a car. Or, oh yes, that's a person. All of this is how we get to exist in the terribly complex environment we've built without running screaming at least most of the time. Well, that and our perceptions of reality are, our brain fills in a lot that it doesn't actually gather information for exactly. Heck, the very mechanism by which we, quote, see the world is far more a construct being projected by our brains than a literal representation of the data our eyes take in. 
It interpolates from things it knows about how the world works and how things move, meaning that for neurotypical folks you don't have to try and focus your attention on all of the things all of the time. But to get back to AIs, the challenge that comma flag is that essentially you can end up with a near infinitely large number of objects that your AI needs to learn about from an infinite number of angles. Because sure, you can train it on what a bike looks like, and that you don't want to hit one. And that this is how they move. But then you need to train it on what a bike looks like from the side, and the back, and when it's not quite straight on. But then what about if it's a folding bike? Or a recumbent? Or a penny farthing? Or a tandem? Or a tandem, but it's only got one rider on it? What about when it has a child seat on the back? Or it's towing a trailer? The variations in cases go on and on indefinitely, and because some neural networks are attempting to calculate trajectories for different moving objects to confirm that the thing the AI is controlling, in this case a car, is not going to impact the thing that it's identified that's likely to move, in this case, say, a bike, this can lead to an incredible processing load for the system. Even if the AI isn't trying to calculate what the thing is or isn't going to do, most AIs are designed to be risk averse and either likely to safely stop or disengage if it doesn't know how to handle a situation. So when, as in the example that Comma AI used during Comicon, this kind of system happens upon a bike rack full of tens or hundreds of bikes, the algorithm in question can reach an impasse and either as it did for the example, the vehicle stops, or it throws up its metaphorical arms and goes, you take control. That's okay in a driver assistance system, as long as it's clear that it's happening, but it's really a problem if autonomous pods are one of your goals, because it's identified a hundred bikes, and then the planning step, the step with all those rules saying stay in your own lane, don't hit things, stop at stop signs, yield when you should yield, that bit of the process is unable to deal with 200 bikes all pointing into the road. Now, a human will look at the bike rack and largely disregard it. That's because there's no people there. Or the person there is clearly not about to ride off. Or conversely, the human will look at the bike rack and slow down because someone's strapping on a helmet and looking like they're ready to hit the road. In the case of the company in question, they just marked out that area and said, ignore bikes here for the moment. Which is... A solution, I suppose? It's not a good one though, and not a solution that's really safe or scalable. So that's what Comma's not doing. Comma's engineers are not teaching their system what all the individual things that it might encounter look like. Instead, Comma's approach teaching the AI to drive more like you teach a human to drive. You show it how to drive. Sure, as a learner, you read the highway code, or local equivalent, but essentially you actually learn to drive by looking at how others do it, and by having an instructor say, not like that, like this. Or, in my case, Kate, the speed limit signs are the speed you should be going when you pass them, not a vague suggestion for the future. Comma's using a near end-to-end -end approach. It's not quite end-to-end, -end, which would be sensor information in, driving out, and that's for a couple of reasons. One is that it's useful to be able to understand why the AI has done something. Typically, comma say that when the AI has directed the car to behave in a weird way, it's been easily isolated to something in the source training material. For example, in one case, something on the dash that was visible to the camera and misread by the system as a white line in the center of the lane. Something that was easier to debug by having some insight into what the system is thinking. Another reason for the not quite end-to-endness of the system is that there's a layer of hardware abstraction to allow the same unit to talk to over 100 different types of car. That abstraction layer contains translation from Comma's internal systems to the specific flavour of can the car speaks. And herein lies a fascinating challenge. Watching Tesla's AI day, one of the interesting tidbits was how finely Tesla has to calibrate the FSD system to account for subtle changes in the position of the camera and differences in the lenses between vehicles. Because Tesla's engineers know, and so the hardware for FSD knows, exactly where everything should be on the car. It has this information pre-provided, but each camera lens isn't exactly the same, and each camera is positioned very slightly differently, so Tesla's engineers discuss the challenges those subtle differences posed. That problem is several magnitudes larger for Comma, because the Comma head unit 
be it the comma 2, which was fundamentally a mobile phone, or the comma 3, which is a bespoke piece of hardware, can be fitted to nearly 150 different models of vehicle. And that installation is basically stick this box with a camera on it in roughly the middle of your windscreen. And then the AI has to learn that stuff. Similar to Tesla's approach, OpenPilot is primarily a vision-based system, and Comma's main input is one of the two front cameras. The Comma 3 features a much higher resolution main camera than both the older Comma 2, and more interestingly, higher resolution than Tesla's current FSD hardware. With 1928 by 1208 pixels, which are apparently massive pixels, and a very wide dynamic range. What that means is that it doesn't need much light to function, and it can get a very sharp image despite being only approximately 1080p. And it can get that image even in low light conditions. As with the Comma 2, it performs driver monitoring with a rear-facing camera, which is now much wider angle, and which it seems the team is looking forward to, to enable handling of traffic patterns behind the car, in addition to monitoring the driver. And yes, that does raise some questions about rear window visibility that one doesn't normally think about with externally mounted rear cameras. Also, because it's taught to drive more the way that you and I have learned, it doesn't require super high resolution maps, which are required for, for example, GM's Super Cruise and Ford's Blue Cruise. Like Tesla's vision-only system, it has the potential to be much more flexible about which environments it can operate in. And look, I think that all of us at the channel remain skeptical about the ability of a purely camera-based system to exceed the ability of a system using additional sensors. Humans use all their available senses to drive at times, from vision to proprioception to our sense of balance and inertia, so opting to use just one seems unwise. But during the Q&A it was revealed that the radar systems have, in part, proven challenging due to the frequency of false positives they provide something that we've also heard from Tesla. Although it should be said there has been recent research that suggests it's possible to markedly improve the resolution of radar systems using a modified waveform. So radar systems ability to resolve detail may substantially improve. Another significant discussion came about as the engineers discussed what the comma team refers to as desire. The training footage will, unsurprisingly, include people making turns, or choosing what they feel is the best lane to make a turn when there are multiple options. The AI doesn't know why this has happened, and this can lead to undesirable choices in the way the autonomous system behaves. Similarly, how do you let the car know that you want to go left or right? Something that's important for a vehicle operating autonomously. Part of that is integration with Comma's own navigation system, which is relatively early in development, but as George Hotz says, do you trust the car to make a U-turn all by itself just yet? Having had the joyous experience of the Navia Autonom back at CES in 2018, I'm pretty sure that I'm not quite ready for that level of autonomous decision-making just yet. However, what's most interesting is the development that the end-to-end -end system, while it's definitely really more a proof of concept than a reliable autonomous driver at the moment, can manage laneless roads. Even roads covered with snow. It's also appeared to learn how to identify stop lines and traffic lights. Sure, it's not ready for being allowed to drive unattended and watching videos of the Comma 3 in action. No, we don't have one to play with. Comma are small and don't hand out two grand plus equipment for people to keep on long-term review. And I checked behind the sofa, I don't have two grand going spare, but it's definitely on its way to making driving chill. So the race to build an autonomous driving system looks to still be open. Tesla certainly have a massive technological and financial advantage, but Comma is giving it a run for its money. And as Consumer Reports identified last year, Comma.ai outperformed Tesla's FSD at the time. Obviously, that does predate the rollout of FSD Beta, but it seems the game is still on. Who will win is yet to be seen. But for those looking for a really effective driver assistance system for non-FSD-equipped cars, OpenPilot from Comma does seem to be worth a look. If you'd like more of a deep dive into Comma AI's technology and approach, let us know in the comments below. The same if you'd like us to interview anyone from Comma AI. That's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our other channel, Transport Evolve Take 2. We know that while a fair few of you are already subscribed, many more aren't. So go on, 
hit the bell and help us out. Let us know below what you thought of this video and remember, play nice. If you're not fond of the YouTube comment section, then why not continue this on our Discord server? It's free and we'll leave a link below. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, David Janakula, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahoa, Brophy Wolf, Tezza in the Gong, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Ray Jean Fellows, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ricky Leong, Brian Newton, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, Christopher Jones, Paul Conway, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. And thank you to everyone who's joined recently and who's helping us to employ a permanent video editor. If you'd like to join the ranks of our wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin, and Ko-fi. And of course, you can buy your very own TE swag at our Redbubble store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.